Is this thing on? Hello, baby squidlets and you precious baby yams. Come one, come all. Welcome back, my darling two-wheeled loving children. Please excuse my voice. Even though I am the immortal and illustrious Papa Yam, I am so prone to a cold or two. March was a bit of a crazy month and I feel like I was on a plane constantly. And when you're in a tiny metal tube full of humans breathing, pulsing, and teeming with life, well, you're bound to catch a cold or two. So, apologies for not having my dulcet tones today, but we'll be damned if we don't supply you with the finest in motorcycle content this side of the Mississippi. <clears throat> I am your host, the bald and beautiful, smooth sack, shammy dude, hammy lube, yammy noob. Back once again to deliver the sweet motorcycle content you have come to know, love, and expect from yours truly. I share today's message with you with a heavy heart, but my legal counsel has advised that I disclose it, so here we go. If you've been here for any length of time, it's pretty likely you've been infected with motorcycle fever. That's right, motorcycle fever. It is real, it is terminal, and here's what you need to know. Motorcycle fever is a seriously highly contagious condition. You cannot outrun it, you cannot outperform it. The only preventative vaccine available comes at the cost of gouging your eyes out and removing your ears. Jesus, that's brutal. Treatment options are available but can be quite costly and the results have not been shown to be curative. The only long-term option is to feed the beast, give in to the boiling hot need for speed, and climb aboard your own Widowmaker. It's time to take the first step in your treatment plan. Accept your fate. Congratulations! Accepting that you have an incurable condition is the first step to recovery. The second step is figuring out how to manage your symptoms. So let's get started. Step 1. Buy your first motorcycle. It sounds pretty simple, but once you've caught motorcycle fever, you will probably be itching and converted with hives and so you can wrap your fingers around the throttle of your very own rumble machine and open her up with the first smooth flick of the wrist. Look at a flick of the wrist! Before you haul yourself into the dealership to purchase a brand new steel stallion with a screaming rev line, do yourself a favor and check out 9 things you must do before buying your first bike. Hey, wait a minute! Is this guy plugging his own damn video in this video? You're right, I am. So click that card and go check it out. There's some pretty good stuff in that video and if it really is your first time purchasing a motorcycle, you will want to be as prepared as possible. My biggest piece of advice for new riders or even crusty old veterans who have been out of the game for a while is to buy used. That's right, used. Step away from the shining glory of brand new chrome, metal fairings, and tires that still have those little rubber hairs on them. I know the lights on the showroom floor can be bright and alluring, enchanting even. When you look at the deep hues of a bright red Panigale sitting on the showroom floor, price stickers still attached to it, oozing style and in tip-top shape, it's hard to want to get a beater off of Craigslist. But trust me when I say that you'll want your first venture to the world of motorcycles to be on the back of a used bike. When you're first starting out, you might be attracted to a particular style of motorcycle. Maybe you're drawn to naked bikes, have a thing for scramblers, or you feel like ripping a fat nooner on a super sport. Even if naked bikes are the most patrician of all bikes, seriously this is coming from a diehard sport bike guy, naked bikes make all kinds of sense. Maybe you should click the link below to see how our giveaway FC07 is a perfect little naked bike. Whatever your immediate preference is, there's a strong possibility that it will change within 6 months to a year of you actually riding said motorcycle. Why? Because it's going to take a while for you to figure out what kind of riding you actually want to do, and what style of motorcycle is most comfortable for that kind of riding. If you buy a MotoGP replica, or as close as the factory will allow you because fun fact, those bikes cost upwards of $1 million and are one-off prototypes. Another fun fact for you, in case you don't stick around to the end of our videos and check out the facts, is they make about 260 horsepower. Mind blowing stuff. Anyways, if you buy a race bike with headlights but your end goal is to just commute to work, you might change your mind about the type of bike you should have purchased after a month or so. If you purchase a brand new bike, you may feel committed to keeping that bike because of the investment alone, even if the bike isn't right for you. How's that old saying go? A fool and his money are easily parted? Don't be a fool. Hold on to your hard earned cheddar and make every dollar count. Ah, see what I did there? Dollars? Counting? Moving on. A used motorcycle is going to be less expensive than a new one, and dare I say, more disposable. And I understand some of you might think that calling a motorcycle disposable is blasphemy, but those of you who haven't bought a complete junker on Craigslist don't understand that some bikes truly are disposable, like a paper towel. Now, I'm not suggesting you buy a hunk of junk just to get rid of it in a month or two, that's not what your old Papa Yam is advising here. But the hard truth is that when you are first learning to ride, you're going to experience some turbulence in your relationship. Whether it's centering a crepe myrtle in the parking lot while you're trying to figure out counter steering, or positioning your front tire in the wrong direction after putting your kickstand down, at some point in time you're going to inflict some damage to your new set of wheels. And that's okay, we all have learning curves that don't call me the double Daytona Slayer for nothing. <clears throat> 
But if you're on a used motorcycle, you're going to be more focused on learning to ride and getting more comfortable with being on two wheels than you are on a new, expensive, dream-worthy motorcycle. When you're on a new bike and you aren't comfortable with riding it, your focus is split. Instead of focusing on basic maneuvers and becoming a safe and proficient rider, your focus is going to err on the fear of riding. Fear of dropping the bike, fear of crashing, scratching the bike, scuffing it, etc. Mistakes are going to happen. And the best thing you can do as a new rider is take away the distraction and fear that comes with riding a new bike over a used one. So how used is too used? There's a sweet spot on used bikes. It's usually about 7,500 miles or less. And that's not to say that a bike with more mileage is outside of the good used range. In fact, you should probably check out the things to look for in a used motorcycle video to get a better understanding of what you should be looking for when you're shopping around. So we've effectively settled that you need to buy a used bike, bar none. How do you go about doing that? It's not like you drive down the highway and see lot after lot of used motorcycles to choose from. Actually, I don't think I've ever seen a motorcycle lot. I think that's reserved exclusively for our four-wheeled loving brethren. And that's where the blessing and curse of motorcycle shopping comes into play. The blessing is online shopping. The curse is online shopping. The best used selection of motorcycles can be found online. All you have to do is hit up the old Dr. Google to view keywords. In a matter of seconds, you'll be happily trolling through pages of listings. Your search result is probably going to pull listings from dealerships and private sellers on places like Auto Trader and etc. And you can find some pretty cool stuff on these sites. But here's a golden nugget from this one-time noob straight to you. Check out Craigslist. Seriously. There are definitely some skeezy areas on Craigslist, so you probably shouldn't commit to investing in that listing for a mail order ride or those lost connection sections. But you can find some pretty great bikes in the for sale section. A lot of times people will buy a bike only to realize how expensive it is to fend off motorcycle fever, and they decide to sell their basically brand new toys for pennies on the dollars. Alternatively, there's loads of guys and gals who purchase based on ego rather than common sense, and they end up with the new Ducati Panigale V4 as their first bike because the salesman convinced them it'd be super cool to own one. They ride it for about 800 miles until they realize they have absolutely no business owning a bike that even seasoned track day guys have a hard time extracting performance from it. There are a lot of reasons people sell their bikes, but a lot of light used basically brand new bikes get posted to Craigslist for 3500 bucks or less. The drawback to buying any used bike is that it can be a gamble. There's always a chance the bike was abused or has gremlins someone's decided to feed after midnight in the gas tank. Fear not though, you can take a quick course on signs of a bad motorcycle and be well on your way to avoiding some serious duds. How many videos can I plug in this video? It's seemingly infinite amount. If you do happen to know a thing or two about mechanics, some of the clunkers on Craigslist might be right up your alley. Some of them are dirt cheap and with a little mechanic know-how and investment in some parts, you can come away with a pretty solid ride at a super affordable price. Whatever you're riding or mechanic skill level, if you watch the postings for any length of time, you're bound to find something in good shape that you can afford. Pro tip from a noob, motorcycle prices are higher in the spring and early in the fall because the weather is amazing and considered bike season. Supply is usually lower in the middle of summer or winter, but the demand is also lower. So if you're able to shop ahead of time or wait a bit, you can find a lot more bike for the money than you would in buying a peak season. Now, that's going to wrap it up for today, my guys and gals. Thanks for stopping by and allowing me to impart some of my hard-earned knowledge into those squishy brains of yours. Again, apology for my voice. Sometimes life gets in the way and you just can't do the list videos you want to do, but you keep on trucking. <sighs> To keep the knowledge train running, go ahead and hit that red subscribe button and the bell sitting right next to it, but only if you like having access to the hottest, shiniest dome on YouTube. If short shorts and a smooth as caramel voiceovers aren't your thing, then this probably isn't the channel for you. That's kind of ironic considering that my voice is trash right now. Of course, I have to mention our beginner bike giveaway. One of the coolest things about this channel is that we give away motorcycles here, specifically beginner focused bikes. I've done surveys and shown that about 44% of you don't ride yet, but are curious to start, which is cool. So we've got our FZ07 that's going to have the winner announced this Thursday, and we'll have our next beginner bike announced and revealed on this Thursday as well. And we're going to have two special surprises. So basically this Thursday, you're going to want to tune in because it's going to be insane. And with that, Thanks again for watching and tuning in. I'm blown away by the community we've built here, and it's so cool to see it grow into something truly special. I'll catch you guys next time. Turbo boost it or die. See you later. Fact. The average person's fast food intake will contain 12 pubic hairs a year. But not me, because I don't touch fast food with a 10-foot pole. Goodbye. Goodbye.